fans, I'm very excited to announce a brand new series where I'm going to be delving into the wild world of GCSE Maths. Now I am very unqualified to be doing this, so I brought along my good friend, a secondary school teacher, Mr Bobby Siegel. I'm from East Ham, the London Bar of New York. I'm studying for a Masters in Education, <coughs> specialising in Maths. <coughs> the Seagull has landed. I couldn't do this without my fellow Maths Appeal podcast co-host. Hailing from East London, favourite topics, percentages, probability, percentages, it's Miss Susan O'Kurrigan! There's a few percentages I think are important that everyone should kind of know and feel confident with, okay? One is 50%, okay? How would you write 50% as a fraction? So it's 50 out of 100. Good, okay, so that's equal to 50 out of 100. But some people also know 50% is also equivalent to, it's a simpler fraction. One half. One half, okay. Do people know why? I just wanted to show why, okay? So we think our whole is, this is 100%, and we want 50 of those hundreds. So if I was to count 50 squares, the columns down are 10. So we've got 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, so that's effectively 50 squares. And if we colour in 50 squares, that is half of our whole. Okay, mm -hmm. so that's where it comes from. Okay, but we can also convert this to a decimal by doing 50 divided by 100, which is the same as 0 0.5. You'd have seen that before. Yeah? Mm -hmm. yeah. So another percentage I think is very useful for you to know is 25%. So as a fraction, what's 25%? 25 out of 100. Yeah, 25 out of 100, which you might also know as if I said to find 25% of something, people also know it as another fraction, which one is quarter. one quarter. <laughs> and so to show you why that is the case, if I count out 25 squared, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, because it's a square number. Yes, I was about to say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, so that's 25 percent which is the same as a quarter of that whole okay and then as a decimal which we're going to be using a bit you do 25 divided by 100 which is equal to 0 0.25 okay and the reason I keep going back to this decimal thing is the fact that to find 25 percent using a calculator you can just times by 0 0.25 to find 50 percent you can find times by 0 0.5 to find 10 percent you can times by 0 0.1 this works for every type of percentage okay so if I said to find 15%, yep, uh, what's 15% as a fraction? 15 over 100. 15 over 100, okay. What's it as a decimal? So that'll be 0 0.15. 0 0.15 because that is 15 divided by 100. I said to you, what is 15% of 40? My calculation would be 0 0.15, so that's 15% times 40. Okay, so if you've got a calculator, percentage is super easy. All you need to do is convert your percentage to a decimal, which is just divide by 100, then times by your value. Okay, so if I said to you, what is 41% of 30? What would my calculation be in the calculator? So 41% is 41 out of 100. Yep. So that is 41 divided by 100. Brilliant, which is... 0.41. Brilliant. So that's your multiplier. So we're going to multiply by. Yeah. And then our calculation is? 0 0.41 multiplied by 30. Brilliant. And so that's a calculation. You put that into your calculator and you found 41% of 30. Tick. Okay. To extend it just a little bit, I want you to think of the idea of percentage increase and decrease. Okay. So we're going to increase something. So if I were to say increase by 10%, what that means is you've got your original value, your original thing, which is 100%, and you're adding on 10%. Actually, I'll colour this in so you understand the idea. What we want is I'm colouring in. Mm -hmm. So in total, how, what percentage have I got of my original value? So 100 plus the 10. Which is? Um, yeah. 110 percent. 110 percent. Yeah, no, you guys are doing so well right now. 110 percent is what as a decimal? 
110 divided by 100. Very wonderful. So 110 divided by 100 is equal to... 1.1. 1 .1. 1 .1. So that is our multiplier. So to increase 40 by 10%, you literally do... What's the calculation? 40 times 1.1. 1 .1. Boom. I agree with 40 that. times 1.1. 1 .1. And again, there's no calculator here because it's not necessary. We're mathematicians, not calculators. <laughs> Indeed. Yeah. The calculator doesn't work for you, but you know what to put in. So that's for an increase. Decrease, similar but different. When we're decreasing something, what we're doing? Making it smaller. Making it smaller. Taking away. Yeah. Taking away. Yeah. So here, if I was to say to you, if we were to decrease by 10%, so this is 10%, everyone happy with that? Yeah. And we're gonna get rid of that. So what I want is this bit here. So I want the colored in bit. So what percentage is that? Well, you're left with 90 squares. Yeah. Starting with 100, so 90%. Brilliant, so this is 90%. So to decrease something by 10% is the same as finding 90% of it. So if I said 40 is my original value and I want to decrease 40 by 10%, what's my calculation? Well, it's the same as finding 90% of 40. Perfect. So your multiplier is 90 divided by 100 is 0.9. Brilliant. So 90% of 40 and 90 is 90 divided by 100 to give us our decimal. And then our calculation is 0 0.9 times 40. And that's your answer. And your calculator will help you with that calculation. Okay? So that is a whistle-stop tour of finding percentage of amount, finding increase of percentage, and then also finding a decrease by percentage. I'm feeling confident now. God, you guys have been a wonderful, wonderful pair of students. <laughs> <laughs>
of 80 pounds. Of 80 pounds. And no, we we're taking off 80%. So what we left with? So we're left with 20%. Ah, so yes. I see what you're doing. So you're doing almost like the multiplier reverse of the same thing. Yeah, that's how I was thinking. That's it, yeah. <laughs> that works. Let's do that. I okay, like that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're trying to work out. So the, the original is 100%. Yeah. And we're subtracting 80%. Yeah. So the new value will be 20% of, of that. Yeah. Exactly. So 20% of 80 pounds. How yeah. do we do that? Do you want we that? need, yes, 20% to a fraction. 20 out of 100, yeah. which is as a decimal, 20 divided by the 100, so 0 0.2 okay. is our multiplier, so it's 0 0.2 times the 80 pounds. 0 0.2 times by 80 pounds, which is... You can do this one. <laughs> 16 pounds. There you go. So if my shop was honest, <laughs> it would be 16 pounds. But at least now, yeah. you will not be ripped off in a shop. I, I, I'm still not sure I'm paying 16 pounds for a West Ham football Bargain, show. bargain. We'll even sign it for you. Not for me. Sign it for you. I'll sign it. Pay me now. Thank you for your lesson, Susan. Excellent lesson, of course. Um, so you taught us all about percentages. And I would like to take your brilliant teaching and turn it into a real life example. So when I think of percentages, the first thing that comes into my head is football transfers and sell-on fees. Oh, big money. Exactly. And specifically, the hot topic at the moment, Wolf Sahar, Crystal Palace. So he was a story all summer, will he, won't he leave Crystal Palace? And now the issue was that when Crystal Palace signed Zahar from Man United, my team, why did we ever sell him? It's a whole. <laughs> we won't go into that, but they did. Now, at least Man United were clever enough to put a 20% sell on clause into the transfer contract. Right. So, this means that when Crystal Palace sell Wilfred Zahar, 20% of the total fee will go to Man United. Wow. Now, the reason, or one of the main reasons he never left in the summer, is because Crystal Palace wanted. 60 million pounds. Rip off. <laughs> I mean, it's, it's, that's yes, it's a lot of money for Wilfred Zaha. He's <laughs> good, but is he, that's, that's, again, that's another debate. Yeah. But they wanted 60 million pounds. But if the club wanting to buy Zaha, let's say Arsenal or Everton, two of the clubs who tried to sign him, mm -hmm. they were prepared to pay 60 million, but Crystal Palace would not get that 60 million. This was the problem, because 20% of it would go to Man United. So if Crystal Palace had sold Zahar for £60 million, how much would they actually get? So 20% goes to Man United. Right. So 12 million. So 12 million is 20% of the 60, so this is yeah. equal to 12 million. So how much do Crystal Palace get, Bobby? 60 million, deducting the 12 million to Man United, that's 48 million. So 48, which again, it's a lot of money, uh -huh. but, but it's, it's not quite. Million, is it? 100 million dollars. <laughs> <laughs> it's million dollars, isn't it? Yeah. So 48 million pounds would go to Crystal Palace, yeah. and that's not the 60 million they wanted. Wow. So how much do Crystal Palace have to sell Zahar for? To make get their sixty million. Do you want twenty percent above that, or is it twenty? Oh. Yeah, twenty percent above sixty million. Because you're going to take that twenty percent off. Oh, so this sum we did. It's very similar to one of your examples, but it's That's a slight change. It's, it's a little bit trickier. So, sixty million is what Crystal Palace want. Right. So whatever fee. Zahar is sold for. Yep. Crystal Palace only get 80%. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So if they right. sell Zahar for X pounds. Yeah. Eight. And they want to get 60 million. Yeah. Which is 
eighty percent of X pounds. X pounds. Yeah. Right. Okay. So sixty million pounds is equal to what times X? Zero point eight. Zero point eight. Because it's not the full fee. It's eighty percent of the fee. So if we want to work out how much Crystal Palace need to sell him for, which remember is our unknown variable X. Mm -hmm. What do we do? So in normally maths, if we've got a coefficient we want to find the inverse of, we divide both sides by 0 0.8. Exactly. So we divide both sides by 0 0.8. So you take out your calculator, you do 60 million divided by 0 0.8, and that has to equal X. Okay. And I, I did this one earlier. <laughs> <laughs> so you have to calculate it. <laughs> it equals 75 million ah. pounds. So you may argue Zahar is not worth 60 million pounds, but Arsenal and Everton supposedly were willing to pay 60 million pounds. But Crystal Palace wanted 60 million, which meant Arsenal and Everton had to pay 75 million, and they said that was too much. Oh, wow. So they were going to pay 60, but actually it would be 75 for Crystal Palace to get what they wanted to the 60. Exactly. It seems that football has agreed maybe he's worth 60 million, yeah. which is why Crystal Palace want that. Right. But because of this 20% sell-on fee, they actually, the buying team has to pay 75 million, which wow. is why he's still there. <laughs> <laughs> that is everywhere, guys. <laughs>